Greetings and blessings upon you all. Welcome to Faith Chapel Presbyterian Church's worship. Way back in the beginnings of Faith Chapel, they worshiped beneath a tree. And so we gather together today to worship simply and wonderfully. So bring yourselves together, gather in and prepare thyselves to worship our Lord. Creator God, you call us to hospitality, to give as generously to others as you have given to us. For there are angels among us. Loving God, you call us to give you glory in the compassion we show to one another to love without judgment of ourselves or of others. We gather as one body, seeking to walk in the way you have set for us. We gather as one body to worship the one who is love. Hospitable God, you invite us to a banquet where the last may be first and the humble and the mighty trade places. Let us share your abundance with no fear of scarcity. Let us greet strangers as angels you have sent. Send your spirit now so that we may find a place at your table and welcome others with radical hospitality. In the name of Jesus, guest at all our tables, we pray. Amen.
One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When he noticed how the guest picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of our Lord. A few years ago, Faith Chapel Presbyterian Church, our church, gathered together with Pitts Creek Presbyterian Church down in Pocomoke and put on a Christmas dinner. Now, the point of the dinner was simply to provide a Christmas meal to those who may not get one on Christmas Day. It was all the fixings of a traditional or what we consider to be a traditional Christmas meal. And we did this down at Pitts Creek in Pocomoke at, the, at their church. And we had it set up so that people could come in and sit down and eat right then and there. Obviously, this was not on Christmas Day. Or they could come in and take home a meal with them. So that way they could save it for Christmas Day or later on that evening or sometime later in the week. And so our two churches joined together to do this. Now, for Faith Chapel, they could have done that. We could have right here at Faith Chapel instead of going down to Pocomo to do it. However, Faith Chapel is kind of out in the country. We are a country church and we're out in the country. And so people who are not able to drive or go long distances might not be able to get to Faith Chapel for that meal. So we decided to do it down at Pitts Creek. Pitts Creek is in downtown Pocomoke and a lot of homes lot of homes around the church so people were able to walk up rather than having to drive and it was the choice that we would be able to serve more people down in Pocomoke than we would have here at Faith Chapel. Now I don't know if you're picking up on this or not but the point of what we were doing was to provide a meal for others. There wasn't any kind of, well, we'll get known, or maybe somebody will invite us in and we'll get something out of this, 
or, you know, anything that was like that. The season was Christmas, and we wanted others to be able to have a Christmas meal, no different than we were going to be able to. And that was the driving motivation for it. In our scripture today, Jesus is talking about a well-to-do person inviting in his family and friends for a meal, and one of those guests taking the choice seat right next to the person who did the inviting, right? And letting them know that, no, don't do that. By all means, sit at the end of the table, and then if you are viewed as the exalted guest, then you will get moved up. And if you're not, then if you sit in that choice seat, you'll be asked to move. In reality, for us, I think that's a moment of humiliation. So I think it's Jesus' way of saying, save yourself the humiliation and just take the lesser seat. And if you are thought more highly of, you'll be moved up. And then Jesus continues on in this scripture and says, you know what? Don't invite your friends and family for a dinner, for a meal. Invite people you don't know. Invite in those who may not get a meal, who may not have eaten today. Invite in those that others would look down upon and think less of. Set them at your table. And then you, as the host or hostess, will be exalted. For most of us, we're probably saying, inviting strangers into my home. Not something that I want to do. Not something that I'm comfortable doing. And I think that is true for so many people. So the question becomes, well, how do you do what Jesus is explaining here when it's so uncomfortable and hard for us as individuals? Well, my recommendation would be pretty much what Faith Chapel in Pitts Creek did. Do it through the church. If you're uncomfortable with inviting strangers into your home, then invite strangers to your church. Serve them a meal. Open up your space so that they can sit and stay cool during the summer or that they can come in and get warm during the winter. Let the church building be your home and you be the host or hostess and open it up and invite in those that don't get the dinner invitations. Now again, Faith Chapel is out in the country, so it's a little more difficult for us to do these things. But that's okay, because we can find different ways of serving. And we certainly did when we joined with Pitts Creek and we put on the Christmas dinner. There are different ways of doing the very thing Jesus tells us to do. Now, also in this scripture, Jesus talks about being exalted, and certainly the humility and the exalting. They're kind of the two opposite sides of the same coin. With one, there's the chance of the other, and we certainly hope that we all tend towards the humility side rather than exalting ourselves. But we need to remember that the exalting is really exalting God. And for Faith Chapel and Pitts Creek, that's what they did with that Christmas dinner. They exalted God. They served people that they probably never would have come in contact with if they had not opened up their hearts in the church to serve them a meal. So going to serve in humility, trying to give someone else something that they knew that they would have themselves. They exalted God, and God in turn exalted every person that was there to serve. Now that exalting 
may not necessarily give anything to us here and now in this world. But it is one of our treasures that we have stored in heaven. So open your hearts and open your spaces and invite in someone new and different and someone in need. And by doing so, you lift yourself and God in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. I believe in a God who created all things and seeks for all to be in communion as God's people. I believe in Jesus Christ who showed us how to share love and who commissioned us to go out into the highways and byways inviting all to be a part of God's work in the world. I believe in the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us into the world, then touches the lives of those around us in ways that make them receptive to love. I believe in the harvest and the call for laborers to receive and respond, sharing light and life with the world. Amen. Guide us, O God, by your Holy Spirit, that all of our prayers and all of our lives may serve your will and show your love. We pray, Lord, for the people and circumstances that weigh upon our hearts and minds. We pray for Open our eyes that they may see the deepest needs of people. Move our hands that they may feed the hungry. Teach our hearts that it may bring warmth to the despairing. Teach us the generosity that welcomes strangers. Let us share our possessions to clothe the naked. Give us the care that strengthens the sick. Make us share in the quest to set the prisoner free. In sharing our anxieties and our love, our poverty and our prosperity, we partake of your divine presence. 
with glory and honor to you, our Lord. Amen. And change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing. Your word is true and you will never, ever fail. Your presence will lead us. This is the day of new beginnings. And change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing. His word is true and you will never, ever fail. Your presence will lead us always providing in the desert. And filling our souls with living water. Turning dead ends into doorways. Come on, let's say this is the day of new beginnings. The oldest passing, the oldest passing, and change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of reveal.
he's never failed yet My heart and my soul confess God is my confidence Oh, he's never failed me yet He's never failed me yet He's never failed me yet Heart and my soul confess God is my confidence Oh, he's never failed me yet My heart My heart and my soul confess God is my confidence He's never failed me yet. There is none like you, God, in your love, your generosity, your gifting, and your hospitality. And we thank you that you are in our lives, working in us and through us to let people know your kingdom is open to all. In the name of your Son, who opened the doors for all and broke down barriers that kept people from you. Amen. It's time to go. Time to re-engage with the secular world. Time to put the faith into deeds. Time to practice uncalculating love. Time to meet the Christ who waits for you. Time to share his boundless hope. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. With the blessing of God in your mind and heart, let each morning be a joy to you. Each path be a joy to you. Each neighbor be a joy to you. Now and always. Amen.